In this lesson, we are going to be making a request to the spreadsheet and using the headers from the sheet and uh, selecting different sheets, outputting the data from the sheets. Uh, so we can update the output sheet value to whatever the sheet name is and save it. Go back out to our web application and we make the request, it's returning the data back from that specific sheet. So it's also including the first row of data as the headers for the sheet. Uh, so in this case, we can see that the headers are first, last, ID, and new, and that's gonna correspond with what we've got for the output of the page. And let's go over to another sheet. So I've just got some raw data in here. Uh, this one actually has five columns, and this one is under sheet number six. So let's uh, make an update to the sheet that we want to output. So we can be more specific and select the different sheets. And in this case, we're going to have five cells there. So let's uh, update that, refresh it. And now we're getting the data that's coming from this sheet. Uh, and as you can see, the first row is corresponding with the headers that we have on the page. And then all of the data is being output from the Google spreadsheet. And that's coming right live within our web application. So that's what we're setting up in this lesson. This lesson we're going to build upon what we left off in the last lesson. So I've created a brand new JS file called it apps2.js and I've kept the same URL as our original spreadsheet data. So we're going to be still working with that same test sheet. Uh, we're selecting the output elements so that gives us something to output on the web page. And then we've got the main URL here for the spreadsheet and then we've got the spreadsheet ID. So we're also going to be making some more specific connections to this. So we know that uh, last time when we were setting up the endpoint, and we'll just call it endpoint one, because the objective is that we'll probably be creating several different endpoints as examples. Uh, so we start with the uh, URL, and there's no spaces in here, otherwise you're going to end up spaces, and it's not going to be able to connect to the endpoint properly. Uh, so you can also combine this into one string as well. And then we also had the query. So the, the query part of it, uh, this always needs to be included. Uh, so we'll just call it Q1, as it's going to be the first part of the query that needs to be included. Uh, so this was just the string value of forward slash and for the visualization data. And then the TQ with the question mark. So that allows us to have a query value. So I'm going to add that to the endpoint URL. And this allowed us to make the initial connection to the endpoint. Uh, so let's do the fetch request. And this time I'm going to actually set the fetch request. I'm going to add a button to the page. And I'll just put in a value of request for the button. And let's uh, select that button object from the page. And we're going to add an event listener. Uh, and this is all done using JavaScript. So using the query selector, we're selecting the element that is a button on the page. And then whenever we want to make the request, so we're adding in that event listener and listening for a click on the button. And we're going to run the function called get data, set up the function get data. And this is where we're going to make the actual request to the endpoint. And we can also sets us up to update and then we can make multiple requests to the end output area. Uh, so within here, uh, let's specify what we want to output. So we're, we're first up, we'll have the fetch request. And this is just going to the endpoint. And right now, we'll set up uh, this value as URL1. And this value for URL1 is going to be whatever we've got for the endpoint. So we can actually get rid of the endpoint and specify it within here as URL1. Uh, we make the fetch request. And then once we get the response object back, we return the data back as a text object. And then the next part of the promise is where we actually get the data. And then we make use of the data 
within the JavaScript. So for right now, we'll just return back what we get back for the data. And just a quick update, this should be actually a G instead of a Q. Uh, so now we can try the request, send the request, we get the data coming back. So by the default, the data is returned back within a JSON format. Uh, so you can also return it back as a CSV format, and that's contained within the uh, TQX output value. Uh, so let's specify TQX and set the output. So you do out and then the colon, and then by the default is JSON. So that's what we're getting right now, or you can specify the JSON. So if we want to output it as CSV, then we can specify that within the request and simply add it with the ampersand. So adding in the and, and then this is going to be Q2. So it's going to add to the request query. And when we output it as a CSV, it's going to output the content in a nice, neat format this way into the console. So it's just returning the data back. And it's returning all of the data back within this type of format. So it's a CSV format that you can specify. Uh, we can also specify which sheet. Uh, so if we don't specify a sheet, it's just automatically taking the first sheet. I have created a few other sheets. So I've got a sheet called sheet number five. Let's add some, some values here. And maybe these can be IDs. And this can be last. And let's do first. So we'll have some more data here. And I'll add in some names here. So it looks like more we've got some more real uh, dummy data. And then we'll have Jane Doe. And then we're going to output uh, this content, output it to the page. So we want to select the sheet. I'm going to just keep it as sheet five, or we can just give it as uh, people. So we want to specify that we want to get the contents of people being output to the spreadsheet. So we, again, we can set in that parameter. And you can add in the and here, or you can add it down here within the query. I usually do prefer to add it within the query. Uh, just because uh, then if I'm not doing it as the first one, uh, I can see that I've got the structure here. So I won't, we won't need the and if we're not using the Q1 there. Uh, so that's, uh, that's an option. So we can specify a sheet and the sheet name. So the sheet name is people. So it's going to update and add to the request. So now what it's doing is it's taking that first row and this is what we can use as the headers for the output. Uh, so let's update that and turn it back into JSON and requesting the content. So we've got the first last ID. So these are now going to be automatically if you have string values there in the top. So these are automatically going to be seen as the headings of the columns. And so that information is picked up that way. So we can use those column headings as we output the data. So let's uh, use that where we can turn it back into JSON data. And this is just taking that response object. We want to remove out that excess, so the bracket there at the end. And this initial part, that's not going to allow us to structure it within the JavaScript format. And that's all of the content that we only want is the content contained within the rounded brackets there, within the first round of brackets. So we're taking the initial data object. And let's use substring. So string methods, we're taking away the first 47 characters, and then we can slice it and remove out the last two characters. So output the content as a JSON, do the request. So now it's in a JSON structured format, and that means that we can also do a JSON parse. So JSON parse, I'm going to do it on the single line. And then of course, you can break up the lines as well. So make the request and now we've got it as a usable format and we're returning back the table data. So we want to only look at the table data because that's where all of the data that's contained within the spreadsheet is going to be contained. So we've got columns and we've got rows. So let's loop through the JSON table data object. And first we'll take the columns using for each loop through, select each one of the columns. And then we can return back the data from the column. Uh, so we do have that main output object. So we're going to append to the output object. I'm going to create a function to make the cell. It's going to request the parent content 
So may, maybe I'll just call it HTML and class add. So it takes some parameters there so we can do it within a single line where we're making the cells for the output content. And this is just a quick way that we can construct these objects. So first uh, let's create the element using the document create element and the element that we're creating is going to be a div. We're going to take the parent object and that should be parent and append the newly created element to the parent. Take the elements uh, using class list. We're going to add the class add value that was sent in as a parameter. And then lastly, let's uh, return the elements in case we want to use it for something else. Uh, so now that we're looping through the content, we want to make the element. Now let's give it a name of L. And then, so let's uh, pass the contents into the make cell. So first we've got the parent where it's being output to. So that's the output. Uh, so maybe we want to actually add a first row before we go through the columns. So this is going to be the headings. Uh, so wherever we've got the headings are going to be contained. And so the parent for the headings is going to be the output. And then within the HTML, so this can just be blank. We're not going to pass anything in to the headings as we're going to have a bunch of the elements that are passed in. And then this is also blank. So we're not going to be adding any classes. Or actually, let's add a class of heading. And then as we loop through, we're going to create the element, the parent for these elements. So we're going to drop them into headings. Uh, the HTML, that's going to be contained within each one of these. We'll do a console log of what we've got for the column data. Uh, so we know what we can add in. So this will be replaced once we get the data. And then we also want to add the class of box to this element. So let's uh, make the request to the data. And we don't have any content that we're putting in yet, uh, but we see that within the output, uh, we've got the label. So we can use the, instead of head, let's output the column and label. And also go back in, make the request do an inspect, see what's going on there within the elements. So we're getting the headings there and they're adding in the box, but we're not adding the inner HTML. Uh, so we need to still add that to the element, inner HTML, and then that's gonna be whatever we've got contained within the HTML. So now when we make the request, we've got first, last, and index in ID. Uh, let's also add in the heading class so that, that we can distinguish between the heading and the regular content. So maybe we want to make the font size and also let's uh, change the color and we'll do a background color. And of course you can apply whatever styling that you want. Uh, this is just for demonstration purposes. So we've got first, last and ID. And I'm going to update this to 33%. So it goes all the way across. And then depending on how many columns and how many you're outputting, uh, then you can update that styling as well for your own elements. So that outputs the headings of the content from the spreadsheet. Uh, so next up, we know within the table data, if we go into the console and we do a request, we can see the next object that we want to iterate through is the rows of data. Uh, so let's take that next, where we'll take the response back from the JSON object and within the table, we're going through the rows. And then for the rows, we're going to loop through each one of the rows. And so uh, let's uh, also create an element for this. So this will just be whatever the parent element is. And this can just be just a div that's going to hold the content. I need to use the make cell. So it's being appended to output. And we don't need any styling there. Uh, any classes and we can also uh, just we don't have to have any HTML output so make the request let's output the contents of a row as we iterate through and before we make the parent we'll, co we'll comment that out that request so here we are getting the values that are returned so we want to output those values uh, let's also make for the row we'll just add in a class for the row so as we create these We'll add in a class for the row so it doesn't throw an error. 
And now we want to select the contents that are contained within each one of the rows. So the structure is going to be the same, uh, but one of the easiest ways is to then just simply loop through each one of the columns within the rows to actually get the cell content. And that's contained within the row C. So this is also an array and all of the arrays that you can loop through. Uh, so let's take that and we've created the main parent. So row C and then for each row C. And then this is going to return back each individual cell of content that we want to add. And so let's uh, create those elements and uh, let's give it a name of L1. And then this is going to be the box elements. It's going to be attached to the main div there. That's the parent of the element. And then the contents that are contained within there, I use the back ticks in order to update the content. So I want to add in the contents that are contained within the cell and under V for the value of the contents of the cell. So see what we get output. So now we're outputting in a nice neat format the contents that are contained with, from the spreadsheet. So if we were to update the spreadsheet, and let's say we add in a new column here, and uh, we just put some random numbers in there. So we make the request, and let's uh, update the styling to be back to 25%, because now we've got the four columns. Make the request again. So we're able to add a new column, and that automatically gets the heading, uh, and then add in the data. Uh, let's add in some dummy data and refresh it, make the request again. Uh, so now we've got the new data, the new updated data being output into the web page. And that's all coming from this request URL. Uh, we don't actually need that anymore. So you can just comment that out if you want and making the request so that we add in the data nice and neatly on the web page. And you can also comment out the console content says we don't need that anymore as well. So that's how you can select from the spreadsheet. And let's say we want a different spreadsheet. So we want to go back to sheet number two. And uh, here, I'll just add in some headers there. So when you do have string values, you want to make sure that you do have some headers there for your data. So save that. And let's uh, select sheet number two. And then go here and make the request. And I think we've got some wider content there for sheet number two. So it looks like we did throw some error there. We'll copy the contents of the sheet. And usually when you are trying to make a request, uh, and if you don't have any headers first off, uh, it's going to automatically assign different values there for the headers. So that's why I created a brand new sheet. And now when we make the request, we're getting the data being returned back. And this time we actually have the five rows. So let's update that to be 20%, refresh, save, and that allows us to make selection of all five rows. So the reason that uh, that first sheet was throwing an error is because initially we didn't have any headers that were identified in the sheet. So this is an error that you might encounter if you update the sheet data without the headers to something with the headers. Uh, so let's go back and do some troubleshooting and see why that happened. Uh, so selecting sheet number two again within the output, uh, going back to our web page. If we do a request, we see that we get this error here that uh, the value of V is null within the headers. Uh, so let's output that data from the console. So this is that entire data object that gets returned. Uh, so within the top columns, we can see what's happened here is that the type is still number. So even though that we've added in a label, uh, but then after E, we've got all of these blank values there. So it's taken that entire sheet and it's added all of these as valid cells. So that's one of the things that happens whenever we update it. Uh, so you can go here and you can de delete all of the columns. Uh, let's see if that does any changes there. And doing that actually allows us to output the data. So if you do add in the headers and um, 
you, you do encounter this type of issue. That's because it's taking all of those blank cells and treating it as data because it automatically added the headers for all of those, even though they were blank. And then when we're trying to run the script, we're being returned back as null. Uh, so that's a quick fix for if you do encounter that error. And most of the time, if you do set up your headers first and then any of the values that are contained within them, you should be fine to do that type of update. So now any of the content that I update here will automatically get updated within the request. And we can see that value being output there. Uh, also, let's uh, add in one thing within the code where we're just going to clear out the output area and do the request again. So this way, when we go back to the sheet and if we update the content here within the sheet, and I'm just adding in some random values there. And if we request it again, then we get those new updated values from the spreadsheet. And we're outputting them nice and neatly. Of course, you can update the styling as needed and customize the output as needed for your web page. And so this is the live data that's coming from the spreadsheet.